Hi, Joey Lott here, and this is a video in the series that I call Ask Consciousness Anything. And in this video, I'd like to address a question that somebody wrote about physical pain. And it's short, so I'll just read it. It's right over here. It says, how does one deal with very painful physical suffering, such as physical defects that result in painful and debilitating lifelong symptoms? I've lived this way my whole life of 34 years, and I don't know how to function any longer. Now, the truth is that every single one of us can relate to the underlying essence of this question. You know, really, is life just suffering? You know, that was what the that was what Gautama Buddha really inquired into. Is life just about suffering? So you're not alone if you're asking this question. And unfortunately, what happens is that for most of us, we only know how to address this in the mind. And so we're always trying to solve that problem at the level of mind. And of course, the mind does not have any really optimistic uh, solutions for us when it comes to this, because the mind realizes what its fate is, right? It knows that it came to be and it will cease to be. It knows that every object is finite, that every object comes and goes. And so it knows that it will also come and go. And this is the fundamental sense of anxiety or angst or not okayness that all of us are living with all the time because we're functioning from the mind as if the mind was autonomous, as if the mind was its own source. So what's what, the question is, how does one deal with this? And my suggestion would be, don't. The more you try to deal with it, the worse it gets. And you can know that this is true because all you have to do is look to your own experience and you'll see that in fact, the more you've tried to solve the problem, the worse it has gotten. And if we really get clarity on what the problem is, the problem is not about the pain. It's not about those things that we think it's about. It's not about the, at the level of superficial circumstances or symptoms. If it was, then fixing those things would fix the problem. But we all have enough experience in life to know that when we fix those superficial things, it does not solve the problem. All it does is highlight the underlying despair, which is a result of not knowing who we are. When we don't have clarity about who we are, then we will live in that anxiety and confusion and that is despair because we always will reach the conclusion that this is totally hopeless. And unfortunately, for many people, that's where they end up. They don't even have the, uh, the they haven't even received the invitation or heard that it's possible to not be stuck there. So for many people, that's the end of the line. Now, the good news is if you find yourself there at the end of the line, so to speak, and you feel like you're at the dead end and there's nowhere else to go and you've exhausted all of the possibilities of mind because you realize very clearly that no matter what solution the mind can come up with, it will not satisfy you. That is a very, very good place to be because that is readiness. That is when you're finally willing to take a look and discover the truth of who you are. Prior to that, you will continue desperately to seek for solutions at the level of mind. But when you finally realize that it is a dead end, that you cannot ever fully be satisfied with the solutions that the mind presents, then you are ready to discover something in a different direction, in a different dimension entirely, and that is by looking directly to your own experience, not to the mind, but to the most intimate sense of yourself, and telling the truth about what is actually happening. So when you look to your direct experience right now, what you will see inevitably, if you look honestly, let's just really start from the very basics. You can see in your direct experience that who you know yourself to be in the most intimate way possible is that which does not come and go. It is unchanging. You can know this beyond a shadow of a doubt, because if you look, you will see that the you who knows that you are, the you who is hearing this, the you that is here right now, is the same you that has always been in your direct experience. There has never been a time in which the you that you know yourself to be was not. Now, this seems totally obvious, and the mind will dismiss that and say, yeah, but what good does that do me? But if we just pause there for a second, 
and tell the truth, we have to at least admit that the you who you are is the same you that you were when you were five years old, 10 years old, 15 years old. It's always the same you, even though the circumstances of your life may change. They do change inevitably. Every moment is totally fresh. But the you that you are at the, the heart of it is always the same. Your sense of yourself is always the same. That is actually your anchor. That's how you, that is always your reference point. Even though we imagine that there's a reference point in the mind, that actually turns out to be totally empty. When we look for that reference point in the mind, we can't find it. That's why we feel insecure all the time. But if we look and tell the truth about who we know ourselves to be, before thought, that is clarity. And we realize that that's totally reliable and that's always here. So then if we look carefully, we'll see that always the most important intimate experience of ourselves is that which does not come and go. It's totally reliable, always here. It's just the simple sense that you are. Then we see the movement is to mind. So this is actually the power of attention. You can notice that you have this power of attention that allows you to give attention to whatever you want. Now out of habit, it's always moving. It's always moving toward or away, toward or away, objects of the mind. So our attention is stuck in our mind for most of us most of the time until somebody points out to us that we actually have a direct experience of ourselves that is prior to the mind, that transcends mind. And when somebody points this out and we actually look, as I'm inviting you to look right now, you will discover inevitably that the you that you know yourself to be is actually boundless, timeless. It is the light of consciousness itself. So then, this power of attention that we have been unconsciously exercising, moving toward and away objects of mind, we can allow to begin to rest. So you can actually start to notice that you have this power of attention and you can exercise it right now. You can give attention to the sound of my voice and you can notice that that intention to attend to the sound of my voice seems to alter something slightly, right? Now you're more, it seems as though you're more aware of my voice because your attention is on my voice. Now you can shift your attention to my shirt, for example, right? You can see the shirt in the video and you can notice that your attention can go to that. And then you can allow your attention to actually just rest. So normally attention is going to mind the commentary is this good? Is it bad? Do I like it? Is it safe? Is it not safe? Should I go there? Should I do this? What's right? What's wrong? Do I agree? Do I disagree? It's all mind stuff. And it's always referencing something from the past to tell you what this is. But in fact, if you tell the truth, you've never known what anything is because there is nothing that you could grasp. The only thing that is actually always here, always accessible, is your boundless nature, right? You can, you can see that this is absolutely true. You can try your hardest to package up for me your experience and deliver it to me, and yet you cannot because there is nothing graspable there. And yet, your actual experience of yourself is totally reliable at all times. So if you notice this shift that happens you can start to recognize that you can shift in any moment of your life and you can begin to simply rest as awareness, which is your true nature. Now, what would this do for you? Well, the question was, how do I deal with the pain? And I suggested, don't try to deal with the pain. Why would I say that? Because if you see what's happening habitually, every time there's an experience that arises, you turn to the mind and the mind, because of its conditioning, is going to say, this experience is pain, this experience is unacceptable, this experience is something about me that is totally unacceptable, and I must work very hard to change it or die, right? I mean, that's what the mind always does. The mind always says, what's happening is unacceptable, it has to change, I feel isolated, I'm alone, I'm suffering, I'm cut off, I'm a victim, and I have to work to change this, and if I cannot change it, and this is always, always, always what the mind does. We get alarmed and we think that we're the only ones. But trust me, this happens to everybody. 
The mind always says, it throws in at the last moment there. It says, and if I don't get my way, I'll kill myself. It's always the last resort. And it's always holding that out there, like this thing to spook you, to scare you. But you can start to recognize that and tell the deeper truth, which is that you are, in your direct experience, the spaciousness, the light of consciousness. And that all experience, all sensation, all thought, all memory, all of it is happening in you, in your direct experience. You notice that you are aware of the thoughts. You are aware of the sensations. You are aware, in fact, of awareness. And so when you simply allow your attention to rest, then awareness naturally rests as awareness. You are fundamentally aware of awareness. This is your true nature. Now, what good would this do you? Actually, let me talk about first what bad would it do you if you continue to do what you've always done, which is what most of us have done because it's what we've been taught to do. And that is to continue to turn to mind to try to solve a problem so that you can then attain okayness in the future. Now, we see the, the mind eventually reaches its dead end. We've talked about this. And then it's going to say, I, I don't know what to do. The only thing left to me is to kill myself. That's always the mind's last ditch effort. It's the, always the last thing that it's going to throw in there just to try to get its way. So when we do that, when we indulge that pattern, we know exactly what we're going to get. It's going to continue this vicious cycle of re-traumatization. Now, the story goes, oh, this doesn't happen to other people. I'm experiencing some kind of special pain, some kind of special nightmare that other people don't. And therefore, I really am, I, I am correct in trying to solve this problem. Because the mind says, absolutely, whatever is, whatever is, is unacceptable. The pain that I experience, the, if I'm experiencing deformity, then that's unacceptable. If I'm experiencing some kind of uh, something that feels humiliating to me, that's unacceptable. And that there's no possibility, according to the mind, of being open to that whatever is actually being acceptable. So if we turn to the mind, then we're inevitably going to see a problem and try to solve the problem. When we do this, this is really important to understand. All we are achieving, we're not solving the problem. All we're achieving is continuing the re-traumatization. So the more we do it, the more we are re-traumatized. The more that builds up, the more triggers that are associated with it, the more it expands to others, the more that we're basically just seeding trauma everywhere. The possibility of something radically different does exist, however. And this is not something that most people are ready to hear. However, I know that you who are listening to this video are absolutely ready to hear this. And the reason I know you're ready to hear this is because anybody who's still listening to this recognizes the kernel of truth in what I'm saying. And you're actually having to look to your own experience to recognize this. So I want to be clear, do not accept this as the truth just because I say so. That won't do you any good. You must look for yourself and see, is it true in your own direct experience that you are? Now, of course it is, but you have to see this in your own experience. And is it also true that your direct intimate experience of yourself is actually boundless? Can you actually find any boundaries to your own direct experience of yourself? Not in thought, not in mind, not conceptual, but direct experience of yourself. And of course, the answer is no, you cannot find any boundaries. So then what we have the opportunity of doing is beginning to trust in that. And instead of trying to deal with circumstances, instead of trying to deal with the feelings, instead of trying to change things to meet the criteria that you have determined arbitrarily, would be acceptable, it's time for you because you are at the end of the line of the old way and you've realized that it's a dead end and you're ready for something new, radically different, then this invitation is for you. And the invitation is to trust fully in the clarity of your own being. And you can only do this through direct experience and you can only do this through repeated exposure and repeated trust. So in your life, 
my, what I would encourage you very strongly to do is to inquire directly and to simply notice that you are in every moment. And as you do this, what happens is you start with several things. First of all, you start to gain greater clarity about who you are because you're having growing discernment about what comes and goes and what's always here. And secondly, you're developing this growing trust in that which is always here, which always supports you, which is yourself. And the third thing this does is it ends the vicious cycle of re-traumatization. And this is a really important point that most people do not understand because they're still playing this funny game of separating spirituality and meditation and trauma and life and the whole thing. It's all based in separation. But if we tell the real truth, what we can see is that we only have two choices. One choice is that we can go to the mind trying to solve the problem, which perpetuates re-traumatization, or we can rest in the light of consciousness that we are in our direct experience and allow everything to come home, be met, be resolved, be integrated and released. That is freedom. It's not the freedom to get rid of experience. It's the freedom to welcome and include all experience in the trust and knowingness that this is exactly right, that this is the divine will of consciousness, that you are intimately one with that, and that you have the choice in this moment to stay true to who you know yourself to be, not conceptually, this is really important, but in direct experience, to rest as the light of awareness that you know yourself to be in direct experience. When you do this, there is no possibility of re-traumatization. And instead, what happens is there is a, a sense of transformation where what once was perceived as suffering becomes that which reveals the greatest light, which, which is the truth of who you are. And you will know that this is true because everything that had previously felt totally uh, isolating, nightmarish, unacceptable, miserable, those very same things will now be revealed to be your greatest gifts. They will be revealed to be your the, the way in which you, in your uniqueness, can shine the light of oneself into this world and touch upon the lives of everyone. And it's not a mistake. You are not a mistake. You, exactly as you are, are absolutely needed. You are not a mistake. This is important. You are not alone. We are all here together and we need you. We need you exactly as you are. You have a great gift to offer to the world and that is you as you are. Nobody else can do that. And I know what it's like to feel like it's totally hopeless, like you're all alone and like you have some kind of special suffering that nobody else could ever possibly uh, appreciate or know. And that you alone suffer in this horrible way. But I promise you that what you have perceived as suffering up to now is actually a great gift that you have to offer to the world. And the sharing of that gift will be a huge blessing to you and to everyone else. And that's not just nice words. That's the truth. We need you. We love you. Every one of us. You are the light of consciousness shining into the world, and we thank you for that because it takes great courage. It's not everyone who's willing to do this. It's not everyone who's willing to give it all and go all the way and be fully themselves. Not to try to indulge it, not to try to fix it, not try to prove themselves, but to actually just be willing to be the complete vulnerability of yourself as you are. That is a miracle. It is a gift. And there, as I've said, there's no mistake that you're here. There's no mistake that you exist, and there's no mistake that you are here now hearing this. Really hear the, the transmission of this, the energy of this, the frequency of this, which is inviting you to a deeper recognition of yourself and that clarity so that you can share that in the world. That's really important. You know, don't, don't make the mistake of playing small and seeing yourself as some kind of small victim. Don't make the mistake of seeing somebody else like me as elevated or above you or having something that you don't have that you need to get. I am not your guru. I am your friend and I am, I am yourself. And I am 
sharing the good news with you, inviting you to recognize yourself and to shine the light that you are into the world. So I hope this has been helpful for you. Uh, and if you have any further questions or need any further clarification, you always can reach out to me. And by the way, the best way to do that is to go to joeylot.com forward slash ask, A-S-K. So that's J-O-E-Y-L-O-T-T dot com forward slash ask. And there's a form that I've just created there where you can enter your question that you would like to ask consciousness, and I will create a video just for you. So uh, if you are listening to this video and you're the person who asked the question or you have a similar question and you feel like this didn't provide you with enough clarity about that, you can ask, uh, ask for further clarification. Or if you have a different question entirely, you can ask that question there too. The only thing I ask is that it is sincere and I will respond to every sincere question uh, by creating a video and posting it here wherever you're watching this. One last thing, if you are uh, interested in exploring working one-on-one -on -one with me or getting direct coaching through any of my programs, then you can check that out by going to joeylott.com forward slash now, N-O-W. That's J-O-E-Y-L-O-T-T dot com forward slash now. And when you do that, uh, you will get to learn about how you can work directly with me. I offer a variety of programs right now as I'm recording this. I'm focused exclusively on uh, access points, which is an awesome opportunity for self-inquiry in the modern world, in your modern life. It does not require any extra time, energy, effort, or anything else. It's super, super simple, direct, and powerful, and it's a way that you can begin to directly inquire and experience the truth of who you are in all situations in your life so that that, that clarity uh, just dawns and grows and blossoms really rapidly because you're seeing in your life how it's possible for you to shift to the truth of who you are and rest in that and to be actually anchored in that and living your life from that clarity. Uh, so that's what I'm mo mostly focused on now. But uh, if you go to joeylot.com forward slash now, you can learn more about that and uh, how you can get more information about that. Right now, as I'm recording this, I'm offering free private sessions to anybody who's interested in exploring working one-on-one -on -one with me or uh, taking any of my trainings so that we can see if it's a good fit. And at the very least, what we will do, and I promise you this is true, is we will inquire together so that you will have greater clarity about where you are in your journey, what's worked, what's not worked, where you're stuck, and how it is that you can have a clear path in your life so that you can begin to live from the truth of who you are and live from that clarity every moment of your life. And I promise you that that is possible for you. All right, that's it for now. As always, see you next time.